Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Today we'll be talking about uh, wisdom. Wisdom is not for the unjust. And that's kind of a, a common knowledge, a common thought thing, a common sense thing, if you will. But as we know, everybody doesn't have common sense. But anyway, wisdom is not for the unjust, meaning the unrighteous. And this is probably, which is likely why the unjust do so many evil deeds, because they don't dwell in the wisdom. And I'm not talking about man's wisdom. I'm talking about the wisdom of the Most High God. All right. So we'll be going to uh, a book called The Wisdom of Solomon, which is in the Apocrypha, King James Version, the Apocrypha, The Wisdom of Solomon. Who was Solomon? King Solomon. He also wrote in the Bible, the book of Proverbs, uh, Ecclesiastes. But in the Apocrypha, you have the Wisdom of Solomon and another book called the Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus. Um, um, so where you get the same kind of Proverbs and, and Sirach and different, different uh, books like that in the Apocrypha. So we're going to jump right into it. And again, what does Apocrypha mean? It means the hidden books, the hidden books, the secret books. Okay, let's go. Uh, we're going to go to chapter one, the wisdom of Solomon. That is the actual book of this, of the scriptures, the wisdom of Solomon right there, the famous point. All right, let's get it. And you can purchase one of these. It, it, not that expensive. You can actually purchase a, a full Bible with the Apocrypha in it. You can even download the app on your phone or a tablet or something. Uh, it's just the same as, you know, because a lot of books were taken out of the scriptures. All right. That's another topic in its own, as you may know. Anyway, let's continue. The Wisdom of Solomon, Chapter 1. And it reads, Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. The judges of the earth love righteousness. Think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart seek him. You know, with simplicity of heart, seek seek the most high. You know that that um that the decisions and the and uh, the things when you're dealing with the lemma and all that's just for any of us, you know, the things that like like the Bible says judge judge righteously, like and he is saying the same thing, judge righteously. Scriptures also say judge nothing before the time. You know, it also says he that is spiritual judge of all things. Because you can always get somebody to blab out their mouth. You can't judge me. You be judged with the same measure. And so they know those two scriptures. You can't judge me. And for God so loved the world that, he, you know, you don't have a heaven to throw me in or a hell to put me in. And they start running their mouth. You ain't even said nothing to them. But the Bible also says he that is spiritual judge of all things. Didn't say judging the person. As I said before, a thing could be working in a person that's demonic, could be one demon, a legion of demons, thousands and thousands of demons, you know, or an issue that could be cast out and corrected, you know, oil going up in tongues, casting the demons out of the person. That's next level stuff when you have the power of the Holy Ghost and the anointing. So you can judge the thing when, when the disciples couldn't cast the demon out. Uh, what did they tell the, the Lord? Told, told the Most High, we can't do it. He says, some of these things come out by fasting and prayer. He that is spiritual judge of all things. You can judge a thing. So sometimes people and the guilt of their sin, we're all sinners. Saved by his grace, we all fall short of the glory of the Most High. But you always got somebody with some religious spirit walking around or somebody in a demonic spirit. Yippity yappity. All right, let's get it. For he will be found of them, talking about the Most High, he will be found of them that tempt him not, and show himself unto such as do not distrust him. So he will be found unto them that tempt him not. When Satan tempted Christ in the wilderness, you know what I mean? Throw yourself down, for it is written, you know, it's his, his Satan, quoting scripture. The angels will take charge of thee, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. You know, and, and, and the Messiah told him, don't it also it's written, don't tempt the Lord thy God. You know, he was trying to make the Messiah commit suicide. That's how you know that's a spirit, you know, that that gets people into that. Just like the demon in the mountains cutting himself. 
you know, people doing that, that's a spirit. And that you can be healed from that. You can that can, spirit can be broken, you know. But anyway, let's continue. For forward, and I'll, let's let's read the second part of that one more time. And show of himself unto such as do not distrust him. See, the Messiah will show himself as to those that don't uh, have a distrust for him. You know, when you can trust the Most High and love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, you, and trying to walk orderly through the ordinance and laws and statutes and commandments of the Most High God, then you will see great things. You'll see, you'll have these dreams and these things that he imparts, you know, powerful things, great mysteries of the kingdom, these things I deal with. Do I have it every night, every day? No. But you got some people walking around. Oh, I, I, I had a vision. I'm getting a revelation. God told me to tell you, uh, you know, folk walking in entertainment, you know. Anyway. Let's continue. And you know how it is. If I can just get, according to Psalm 147, 147 people that pay $147 in 147 days, you're going to get your blessing. You know, this kind of entertainment. You know, folk really do catch the Holy Ghost and start dancing. We do speak tongues. But then when you got people that look and entertain and do it just for attention, the people on the outside looking in and say, see, that's not real, you know, and it's, a, it's sad because it becomes a mocking spirit. But anyway, let's continue. Again, that's a part of being unjust. But one day the Holy Ghost is going to either hit you for real and you're going to find yourself really up in the Holy Ghost, or you're going to find yourself warned against the Most High. Let's continue. Forgive me. Whew. For forward thoughts separate from God. See? You having these thoughts to and fro with every wind of every doctrine. I'm in this doctrine. I'm in this. I'm in this. I'm following that. I did it. I'm, you know, instead of being in the truth. But what is truth? Well, you know, folk always want to battle you, debate with you, quarrel with you. And they got a spirit. Can't hear. You know what I'm saying? Dull of hearing. Blind. And the Messiah ain't even dealing with them until they repent and humble themselves as a child. Amen? So be it. For forward thoughts separate from God and his power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. Now, he's going to correct the unwise when you try him. All right? Be careful. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. Malicious wisdom ain't entering. Again, there's no correlation with the wisdom and the unjust. Nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin. You're subjected to sin all the time. Don't expect wisdom. You can float around in man's wisdom and science and all this other crap, but you ain't going to have that great that knowledge of the most high. You're going to have that power of the Holy Ghost. And that's why you're walking around mad at those that do have it. For the for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. It gets away from deceit. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So the Holy Ghost ain't going to be in there when folk is in the wrong spirit. And you got folks, some folks sitting up in people's churches in the wrong spirit. And it can happen to any of us. What did David say? Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not, you know, from thy presence. Restore the joy of thy salvation. You know? Hallelujah. For wisdom is a loving spirit. You hear that? Is a loving spirit. See, for all you haters, I, I don't, the apocrypha, it's not a part of the Bible. No, wake up. Wake up. I'm reading out of this. It's no difference. But you let folk get in and distort your thoughts. You know, we don't have that in our church. So I don't, unless my pastor, you know. Woo! It's that old Jezebel spirit. Not talking about female, I'm talking about the Jezebel spirit that separates the, the children of the Most High from him. That, that adulterated, that spirit that comes in. That's another message. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. For wisdom is a loving spirit and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. See that? For God is witness of his reins and a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. The Most High is here, there, and everywhere. You know, omnipotent, omnipresent. He sees his eyes behold the, the to and fro the ends of the earth. You know, and he hears everything. He never sleeps or slumbers, you know. So in that sense, it's never too late to say, you know what, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I need you today. Uh, I've messed up. I've sinned in front of all of heaven. I can't live without you. And I need you. I know that you see my sin, my filth. 
uh, my mindset, my thoughts are wicked, the things that I've been thinking about. I need you to heal me. I need to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I need to be baptized in your name altogether. I need a new start. But there's so many churches. Some of them are good. Some of them are crooked. Some just for money. Maybe I don't have the right dress. I don't know what to do, Lord. But I know right now I need you. I've had suicidal thoughts, all kind of thoughts. Send an angel. Send the Holy Ghost. Send me power. I know I'm just a babe. It's going to take time to learn and walk. But help me understand your word. I never understood the Bible. I need a teacher. I need somebody that really loves me. Send your help, Lord. I'm alone in this world. I need you. I repent. Please forgive me. That's how you come to the Most High. Humble. In your own way. So don't feel like, I don't know what to say. I don't, you know. That's an example. My prayers for those that can get in that place, that those those things. Now, is it going to be easy? No. Are you going to have persecution? Yes, because he did. So you got to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. You know, so that's why all this, yeah, blab it and grab it, name it and claim it. I got a plane with my name on it and a car with my name on it and a this with my name on it and a that with my name. I got money. Look, I, I just had to testify. I was thinking about a thousand dollars and then I looked up and it was in my hand. How did it? Yeah, you know, just all this kind of. You know, I'm going to see prophet so-and-so. They're going to prophesy me. A new wife, a new husband, a new car, a new van, a Escalade, a Navigator, a Bentley, a Maybach, a Tesla, a uh-uh, a uh-uh, a uh-uh, a uh-uh. It is funny, but it's sad at the same time. And I feel for some people that are in that place because they don't know. They've been in churches and they see that and they think, well, that's what I got to do to make it seem like I'm powerful. And it's sad for babes that really do want to know Christ, that are lost about religion and all that they see this kind of circus going on and it's sad it hurts me to see that you you you, you, you but you're gonna pay for it just like you just like jeremiah 23 talks about woe to those that the, to the pastors that lead my flock astray let us continue hallelujah Whew. for the spirit of the lord filleth the world and that which containeth all things have knowledge of the voice. That's why I said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteousness, unrighteous things cannot be hid. You'll know who they are. It's like the tree, you know what I mean? You know the fruit, what they bear. Neither shall vengeance, when it punisheth, pass by him. Because see, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, he will repay. Touch not thine anointed, do thy prophets no harm. You know, not here to, to hurt you. Like the old saying, if I can't, uh, help you, I'm not going to hurt you, but you got folk all day long plotting to take out uh, the, the last day prophets of the Most High God. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hidden, right? For anyway, let's skip it, skipping down for inquisition. Now, let's continue that. Like I said, neither shall vengeance when it passeth, uh, pun when it punisheth pass by him. So the Most High going to deal with him for, or her or whoever it is. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly. It's going to seek out what the ungodly is talking about. And the sound of his words shall come into the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. You got these wicked deeds? It's going to go to the Lord. Yah is going to see it. For the air of jealousy here of all things, and the noise of murmurings is not hid. So like the Bible say, don't be a complainer and a murmurer. You know what I mean? And he's a jealous God. He hears all that stuff. Therefore, beware of murmuring, which is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting. A lot of people backbiting folk, trying to tear folk down, slander folk, say all kind of things. And then some of these people are supposed to be Christians. Anyway, for there is no word so secret that shall go for naught. You know, that shall go for naught, go for nothing. And the mouth that believeth slayeth the soul. Seek not death in the error of your life. See, some folk, it's like the Bible said, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but it leadeth unto death. Seek not death in the error of your life, and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. Don't mess up. For God made not death, neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. For he created all things, hallelujah, that they might have their being, and the generations of the world were healthy, and there was no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. For righteousness is immortal. But ungodly men with their works and words call it to them. They call it to them. For when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed it not and made a covenant with it because they were they are worthy to take part with 
unrighteousness. So you got to be righteous. Shalom.